history is full of firsts. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Many of those firsts shaped our way of life. For 70 years, KPRC Channel 2 has been proud to be pioneers in shaping television and Houston history. place that has a sense of history, and indeed it is. See, taking the president from spring to compensation. If you have something you'd like Channel 2 Investigates to check out, call the tip line at 713-223-TIPS or email investigates at click2houston.com. This is Channel 2 News at 10. And we begin at 10 with breaking news from Northeast Harris County. That's where Precinct 3 Constable deputies say a 62-year-old man shot his 43-year-old stepson. The victim was shot in the chest and shoulder and was flown by life flight to the hospital. This scene unfolding right along Wyatt Oak Lane near the East Beltway just after 6 o'clock this evening. Deputies tell us the shooting stemmed from some sort of an argument between these two men. We are working to learn the stepson's condition. Only on two tonight, a Houston mom says there is somebody at her child's school sending lewd texts to her daughter. And we're not talking about a teacher here, but another student who is eight years older. And tonight, the mom is demanding the school do something about it. Channel 2 anchor Jonathan Martinez is live at Yes Prep North Central Campus with a story you'll see only on two. Jonathan. Hey yeah, guys, and this mother says this all stems from inappropriate messages allegedly sent from a 19-year-old student to her 11-year-old daughter. The mother says she reached out to the school, but she feels their response so far hasn't been good enough. I feel like the school failed me. I mean, well, not me, but, you know, my daughter. An upset mother too concerned for her daughter's safety to share her identity says she now worries every day her daughter goes to the Yes Prep North Central Campus. There was enough evidence for the school to call authorities. She says she's frustrated with how the school handled a situation when she says her 11-year-old daughter was contacted by a 19-year-old male student also at the school through Instagram last month with inappropriate messages. It's asking her if she wanted to be in a relationship, if um, she was freaky, and on other messages, if she could send him nudes. The mother says after reading the messages, she contacted the school who she says told her the situation would be handled. But she says it wasn't long before the 19-year-old was spotted back in school. About a week later, my daughter told me she ran into him at school again. The school released a statement about the matter reading, quote, No parent should need to worry about the safety and wellness of their child. We take immediate actions to help keep students safe. And inappropriate social media messages sent to students on or off campus are immediately reported to authorities. When you tell me you're going to take action and you're going to do something about it, I'm thinking he's going to be expelled from the school. But it's little comfort for this mother who believes more needs to be done. I want him out of that school. He shouldn't be there. 
And the Harris County Sheriff's Office is looking into this case, but so far no one has been charged. However, that case and investigation remains ongoing. We are reporting live tonight from North Harris County. I'm Jonathan Martinez, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Thank you, Jonathan. New at 10 o'clock, thieves caught on camera breaking into an East Houston restaurant not once, but half a dozen times, making off with thousands of dollars. Channel 2's Roseanne Aragon live at the Blue Bayou Cafe off of the East Freeway near Federal with a story you'll see only on 2 tonight. Roseanne? Yes, that right. that's right. You can see this is a brand new locking system because just last Friday, this restaurant was broken into. They came through this door and continued into the restaurant, taking cash and also a safe. Yeah. For Horatio Aguirre, Blue Bayou Cafe is not just a workplace. It's a place he calls his second home. If you love your job, you don't get to work the rest of your life. Aguirre hopes to spend his life here, the place where he started as a server, then moved up to manager. He knows exactly why he's here. It's just the joy of seeing people happy that they could just come in a restaurant and and enjoy a beautiful meal with us. Even though he's seen this restaurant deal with this, multiple break-ins. Uh, the first time they took $11,000. Then again, another five times. Several times the workers and restaurant were held at gunpoint. The second time they take $6,000. Each time he's called police to come and says he waits. It takes about from two to three hours. For the team, the fear is real. At the middle of the night when we walk outside and we never know if we're gonna make it home. The last time, last Friday. Surveillance video shows this, a car circling around. Then they broke through the side door of my restaurant. Then they break to the liquor room. Then one goes violently for the cash register. Another beats the safe. Well, he tries to. And they couldn't uh, break it there, so they just went ahead and dragged it from all the way to from across my kitchen. Ultimately, the four thieves took $1,600. But throughout the course of the six break-ins, this restaurant has lost tens of thousands of dollars. Aguirre fears their calls for help have fallen on deaf ears. We're trying to grow as much as we can, um, and it is hard. And he says the restaurant is really proactive. They lock up every night. They make sure all of the cameras are on and they call each other to make sure all of the workers got home safely. They hope that these thieves get caught and that what happened to them doesn't happen to anyone else. Reporting live from East Houston, Roseanne Aragon, KPRC, Channel 2 News. All right, Roseanne, thank you. Well, you've probably heard by now the Astros held a press conference this morning apologizing for the first time as a team for the sign-stealing mm -hmm. scandal. Tonight, some national media outlets are just ripping into our team. The headline in the New York Post, Astros' pathetic apology won't absolve their baseball sins. In USA Today, on day of reckoning, Houston Astros apologize to everybody and nobody at the same time. And the Wall Street Journal throw that Astros press conference in the trash, calling it a swing and miss. Channel 2 Sports Director Andy McAvoy is in West Palm Beach, Florida, where spring training is underway. He joins us live with more reaction from the players. Randy. Hey guys, yeah, certainly some strong words there. You just mentioned, as you can imagine, that press conference drew all kinds of attention, not only from Houston area media, but all the national media that flocked here to West Palm Beach. Now, inside the clubhouse, what you heard from the players, or the Astros players are talking today, were key words like a sorry, remorseful, and it'll never happen again. We feel remorse, like I said, the impact in our fans, the impact in the game. Uh, you know, we, we feel bad. Everyone learns, learn from, learn from what happened, and we hope to. Uh, How would you describe that? Like Several prominent Astros players spoke in the clubhouse, ending what had been an off-season of silence after the MLB investigation verified their role in the sign-stealing scandal. I mean, I, I regret everything. You know, I, 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 I regret that we were in this situation. Um, oh, we shouldn't be. I don't, I don't think it was necessary. We were like, like you said, we're, we're a good, we were a good baseball team. We still are to this day, and it's just one of those things, unfortunate things where, you know, we, we didn't make the best judgment call. Two topics that stood out in questioning: Astros believe their 2017 World Series was earned and shouldn't be tainted. They also emphatically denied any use of buzzers during the 2019 ALCS against the Yankees. You know, I, I see these guys um, after the game, you know, before the game, um, dressing and undressing, and I, I never saw uh, anything like that. That's uh, that's a lie. Nobody wore uh, buzzers. Nobody wore devices. 
Well, despite the Astros' efforts today, there continues to be national criticism from their counterparts throughout Major League Baseball, and that will not go away anytime soon. Much more coming up in sports. We're live in West Palm Beach tonight. Randy McElvoy, KPRC Channel 2 Sports. See you soon, Randy. Thank you. Meanwhile, the race for the White House arrives in our own backyard as two Democrats hoping to defeat President Trump set up shop right here in Houston. Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders and billionaire Tom Steyer now have staff members working here in the Houston area. But they're not the only ones focusing on the Bayou City. By the way, the Texas primary on Super Tuesday is less than three weeks away. Channel 2's Marianne Martinez live in Midtown, where former New York Mayor Mike Bloomberg just held his second Houston event of the evening. Marianne? Well, Dominique, Mike Bloomberg just wrapped up an event here where he land, launched Mike for Black America. He also walked away with the coveted endorsement of Houston Mayor Sylvester Turner. Surrounded by African-American supporters, Michael Bloomberg spoke in Midtown Houston, apologizing for his support of a police practice known as stop and frisk, which largely allowed officers to stop blacks and Hispanics. I defended it looking back for too long because I didn't understand then the unintended pain it was causing to young black and brown families and their kids. I should have acted sooner and faster to stop it. I didn't, and for that I apologized. It's important for me to hear that a recognition that the policy that was put in place was not the right policy. He also spoke about the Greenwood Initiative, a plan to increase black home ownership, create black owned businesses, and invest in disadvantaged neighborhoods. President Donald Trump's campaign released a statement as Bloomberg spoke in Houston. Quote, Texans are enjoying a booming economy thanks to the leadership of President Trump. Anti-Second Amendment pro-tax Michael Bloomberg is wasting his time here. As much of a liberal as President Trump was trying to paint a Michael Bloomberg earlier today at an event uh, downtown, Bloomberg was interrupted not once but twice by protesters, one of them calling him a Republican. Reporting live from Midtown, Marianne Martinez, KPRC, Channel 2 News. Marianne, thank you. President Trump getting some pushback today from an unexpected source, his attorney general, William Barr. Public statements and tweets made about the department, about cases pending in the department, and about judges before whom we have cases uh, make it impossible uh, for me to do my job. Barr made the statements after he received heavy scrutiny for overruling prosecutors and pushing for a lighter sentence for the president's former advisor, Roger Stone. He says it's a decision he made before the president tweeted about the case. Spencer solves it yet again, getting a new roof for Davis Hill Baptist Church in Tarkington Prairie, Liberty County. The roof had been leaking for years, leaving this sanctuary soaked. Watch how investigator Bill Spencer gave the church a new start. It's all there for you on click2houston.com. Are we prepared for a cyber attack on our power grid? What do we use electricity for? And it really is a lot. It could be very serious if technology uh, to the Office of Emergency Management or any partners like transportation were impacted. Coming up, Channel 2 investigates Houston's cyber threats and what's being done to protect the power grid from a possible attack. Well, speaking of power, get those heaters going. It's going to be a cold morning. I'll go over the temperatures with you, but look for a lot of 30s. I guess that's good for Valentine's morning. It's certainly cuddle up weather. I'll have the full forecast for tomorrow and into the weekend. Let the good times roll. Coming up on Channel 2 News at 10. Power outages can happen anytime for a variety of reasons, like weather or a car crashing into a utility pole. In fact, there was an outage earlier today on Galveston Island that left a couple of thousand customers without electricity. But what if the outage was a lot bigger? And what if it happened on purpose? Tonight, Channel 2 Investigates continues a special series on cyber threats facing the Houston area. Channel 2 Investigator Joel Eisenbaum shows us how a major attack on our power grid could knock us back into the dark ages.
Brittany Sawyer is busy. When my husband goes to work, I stay home and take care of everything around here. <laughs> Try a new list today. That includes her three kids, who Hi. she homeschools. So Brittany doesn't have time for power problems. A lot of great curriculum uses either computer, or TV, or DVD-based, and um, it would be very crippling to not be able to do that. So when we lose power, there's not a ton that we can do. Living in Houston, you expect sporadic power outages from time to time, especially during severe weather. They're usually nothing more than a nuisance, with power restored in a couple of hours. More widespread power outages, like those we see during hurricanes, are more problematic, lasting for days. A successful cyber attack on Houston's power grid could be much worse. Our general mission is to be able to come in and help our community respond and recover from events, cyber attacks included. Channel 2 investigates found there are thousands of cyber attacks against critical infrastructure like power grids every day in Houston and in cities across the country. Most of them are not wide-scale attacks designed to shut down entire systems. But Francisco Sanchez's team at the Office of Emergency Management still prepares for a worst-case scenario. It could be very serious if technology uh, to the Office of Emergency Management or any partners like transportation were impacted. Uh, but our job is to be paranoid. In the summer of 2003, a massive blackout crippled New York City's transit system for days. Turns out it wasn't a cyber attack. It was a bug, but a big one. No subways, no traffic lights. People jammed the streets trying to get home any way they could. Thousands were forced back to the basics on foot. A successful attack on our power grid could cause chaos on our already traffic-choked streets. Ground airplanes shut down the port and render light rail useless. But that chaos may be a secondary concern. We would want to check on nursing homes hospitals, uh, more challenging, those people in the community who rely on medical equipment that needs to have power. Um, and so our response will be geared towards making sure that life safety was our first mission. The Electric Reliability Council of Texas, or ERCOT, provides power to 90% of the state, more than 25 million people. ERCOT prepares year-round for any type of threat to the electric system. It's our first line of defense. We have highly trained cybersecurity staff that are continually monitoring the electric system to help us safeguard against any threats. ERCOT uses a five-function framework to guard against cyber threats. Identify, protect, detect, respond, and recover. And while the experts say a massive grid-killing attack is not very likely, the threat still makes Brittany Sawyer think. What do we use electricity for? And it really is a lot. Last year, Texas lawmakers passed a few bills to pump up protection. One creates a grid security council. The other establishes a cybersecurity monitor. Now, next Thursday night at 10, we're going to take a look at how an attack on our banking and finance industry could also impact us. Joel Eisenbaum, KPRC, Channel 2 News. And now here's investigator Robert Arnold with a story you'll see all new tomorrow night at 10. There's a big change in these car break-ins. And police say you're just making it too easy for the criminals. That's really putting a, a neon flashing light on your vehicle. Channel 2 investigates looked at thousands of cases of guns stolen from cars. It's fueling the urban violence uh, in our city. What crooks look for, which parts of town are getting hit, even what time of day. We're breaking it all down. These guys have shifted. Police say there are several things you can do to make yourself less of a target. We'll explain tomorrow night at 10 on KPRC. Channel 2 News. And if you have a story for Channel 2 Investigates, call the tip line 713-223-TIPS or email investigates at kprc.com. Frank joins us now. Cold night tonight. Might be yep. chilly getting the kiddos off to school tomorrow morning. It's going to be for sure. It's going to be chilly and it's going to be the weekend. That's right. Yes. Even better. And, and Valentine's Day. <laughs> and Valentine's yeah. Day and Mardi Gras starts. So a lot to get looked for. This is a kind of shot at the Kima Boardwalk mm. that you think, oh, is the is Friday about to happen? That'll, yes. that'll get you ready and warmed up. <laughs> From Baytownville. <laughs> Nice sunset here, Tarkington Prairie. Isn't that nice? That's out where um, uh, Bill Spencer was. That's right, yeah, yeah. with the church and the yeah, roof. Yeah, the roof. All right, a beautiful ranch Look shot there. I know. And this beautiful shot, the sun going down in Galveston. And this guy. Too cool for school. Oh, my goodness. You know how dogs party? They tailgate. <laughs> 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 
Cutie. <laughs> we, we pay him for that, <laughs> folks. Well, it's sinking in, isn't it? All right, 45, north winds at 9, 80% the humidity. That's not the issue. Obviously, it's, not, it's nice out there. Galveston right now is at 50, but a strong wind continues there at 21 miles an hour. So look for numbers to only go down about 5 degrees tonight. The weekend looks awfully nice, 64 and 68. There's a slight chance for a Sunday shower. The funky uptown umbrella brigades tomorrow night. The Zany golf cart parade, the Aquarius parade is on Saturday. The Gambrinus parade, the Fiesta Gras parades on Sunday. There's a lot going on, and that doesn't even mention all the concerts, which I think they even had some tonight. So get going. Just be careful. 40s right now to 50 on the island. It's a cool one. These dew points give you a good idea of where we're going to land for an overnight low. The winds out of the uh, north at uh, 7, 6, 13 miles an hour. I don't think they're going to calm down a whole lot. I think it's still going to be a bit of a breezy one as we get into tomorrow, especially on the east side here. Still 22 mile an hour gust and 26 in Galveston, 15 in Dayton. So morning lows, 34 Cleveland, Livingston, Huntsville, 35 in Conroe, 36, 37, 40 degrees downtown. So mid to upper 30s to around 40. That's what we'll wake up to. But we'll only make it to 58, maybe 59, 60 degrees in some spots. But Valentine's Day at brunch, 54 for noon, 56 at 4, 53 at 7, and 48 at 10. So the future cast has this high pressure and control. It's going to start to bring in a little more cloud cover as we move into Saturday. I think fog's going to be the big issue for Sunday night into Monday, that sea fog rolling back in. Not much chance of rain on Sunday or Monday, maybe 10% chance. But we get to Tuesday, and that front starts to make a play. So it goes up a bit, and then that cool air at the surface and the Pacific air over it for Wednesday, that's our best chance for rain next week. Right now at 40%, that may go up before it's all said and done. So 38 to start, 50 by 10, 54 at noon, 56, 58 in the afternoon, but sunshine all the way through. So it'll feel pretty nice. Curl up. For the for your hair, right? Curl up, curl up together. Curl up. There you go. Yep. We got it. 50, <laughs> 58 for Friday. 66 on Saturday. 10% chances of rain Sunday and Monday. Roughnecks look like they have a pretty nice weather. President's Day Monday, and there's that front Wednesday, and then another big weekend for Martin Mardi Gras. We're going to next Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So February just keeps on rolling, rolling, rolling. As yep. long as the bookends look good, we're good. That's right. Weekend. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Bring it on in. Thank you, sir. Randy McAvoy live in West Palm Beach, Florida tonight with the Yacht. Astros. That's right, guys. Uh, you know, the Astros have made their statement today. Now, as you look to the season, they've got to get ready for the fans on the road. They're going to be relentless all season long. We're going to talk about that straight ahead. Also here from Dusty Baker on day one of spring camp, pitchers and catchers. He's just happy to be back in the game. We'll hear from Dusty, and as the team looks to put their issues behind him, and we'll talk some roughnecks. they got a game this week, but they'd like to play in a bigger game in Houston later this spring. We'll tell you about it straight ahead. Now for the Xfinity Sports Desk. Hi, everybody. Welcome to West Palm Beach. What a day it has been for the Astros uh, during the day here at the facility. They broke their silence, and although their critics won't let them, they are ready to turn the page. But on the road this season, they've got to get ready for the fans that will be booing them at every single stop. We talked to them about it today. As a team, we're ready for anything, man. Um, we know we're wrong, so we got to... We gotta be responsible for what we did, and we gotta, you know, just go on the road and, and, and see what happens. I mean, it's, it's it's not it's not gonna be a fun season, obviously, on the road. We know we're gonna stick together. We know that it's gonna be hostile, but everyone has the right to feel they want to feel about it. All right, after the early morning news conference today and the interviews inside the clubhouse, pitchers and catchers finally got in their first spring training workout with new skipper Dusty Baker looking on. It's a learning curve for Baker, who's just happy to be back in uniform. It feels good because I didn't even think I was going to ever be back. I mean, I gave away everything that I had. I mean, I didn't even have a, a, any shoes. I didn't have a jock. I didn't have any uh, underwear. I didn't have nothing. I mean, I'm excited. Nobody's going to you know, kill my joy or excitement because I'm, you know, I'm happy to be back. All right, some Houston Roughnecks news now. They're 1-0 after that opening win on Saturday. They're going for two in a row this Sunday. They get the Sunday slot, 5 o'clock against St. Louis. They'll play it over there at TDECU Stadium. All right, some news today back in Houston now. The folks from the XFL in town making the announcement that we told you about the last couple of days. They're going to bring their first championship game to Houston coming up in late April. It would be great if the Roughnecks can play in it. Here's a reaction from Oliver Luck. 
I thought the quality of play was pretty good. I thought the quality of quarterback play, guys like P.J. Walker and Matt McGloin and Cardell Jones looked looked great. Um, you know, attendance was was solid. Our TV ratings were were solid. So I think by and large we got a favorable review. We're we're you know looking at a lot of different options. Uh, nothing final, but we'll continue to sort of roll out news over the next three four weeks as we get closer to the championship date. All right, that'll be big coming up in late April. Rice hosting Old Dominion tonight at Tudor Fieldhouse. Close uh, one last time out now. Check out Trey Murphy, the third, buries another three-pointer. That's what he does every night out there. Rice up 10 at that point, but the Monarchs make a huge run. A.J. Oliver with a three. They get the lead, and they don't give it up. Uh, Rice falls tonight. Tough loss for the Owls, 73-70. to 70. All right, guys, uh, a big day indeed for the Astros. Maybe back to baseball. We'll talk some baseball with the guys tomorrow's workouts continue here in West Palm Beach. We'll see you then. Yeah, I don't know if the rest of the world is going to be so forgiving, but we'll see, Randy. <laughs> That's right. Thank you, and yep. we'll be right back. Yes for less. Hey, guys, Rosario Dawson is my guest tonight. Plus, we have Logan Lerman, music from Megan Thee Stallion. The Tonight Show starts in just a few minutes. All right. All right. Megan Thee Stallion on. Okay, That's good. Right. Nice. Ooh. All right, have you got your flowers yet? I'm work. Yes, I'm uh, working on it. Yes, so we're, we're we'll, I'm working on it. Yes, she'll be happy. <laughs> I hope. Yeah, I've met your wife. I don't know how you got her. <laughs> you, roll, you roll the dice and it just works out. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> okay. Uh, tomorrow morning it's going to be cold. Temperatures right there, 38 degrees, and even colder up to the north and west. So Valentine's Day, not bad. A little love brunch, 54 flower stop. In case you forgot them, everybody will be down there fanning. Oh yeah, the two flower shops right there. I might be, be in line with them. I don't know. <laughs> Oh, wait a second. <laughs> I said might, might. Uh -huh. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>